Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are at another one of my top three favorite places in Florence. This bag contains salsa y limon on cashew. I about said celebration, that's not right. All right, let's go through what we got here. We got a steak taco, that's probably, maybe, not a salad. So we got the sope with chorizo, a steak taco. We're gonna talk about tacos here in a minute. Carnitas and tomatillo. So yeah, salsa limon is, um, one of our favorite places. We we weren't part of the initial crowd that was eating over there. We didn't know. Somewhere around, I guess it was 2021. I don't know, I'm trying to do the math. Either way, we said we'll give them a shot and uh, we never left. I'm gonna eat this taco first because um, the reality is tacos don't keep very well. And I wanna do a tacos ranking. We're gonna rank tacos, but we're honestly probably gonna do that in the car. So we're gonna drive around the city. We're gonna order tacos and we're gonna eat them right there in the parking lot because tacos don't hold up on the drive very well. So I only got one, but I got here a steak taco. And I'm gonna tell y'all, like eating with all this weird setup, trying to figure out what works the best. Oh, this lemon is like, what? That lime just exploded and it is bone dry. Look at that. Okay, well, let me be honest, that's disappointing. I'm not gonna hold that against them though. Let me see if there's a lime in here. Let's try this one. Is it the same lime? No, it doesn't look like it. And I can see the steam coming off of these, so these are fresh. You can't have the steak taco without the lime. And then of course, this taco sauce. So there's a weird thing where for some people, cilantro tastes like dish soap, I've heard. I am not one of those people. So when the time comes and we get into that taco ranking, I think that salsa y limon will perform pretty well. So what I did was I mixed it up for y'all for this video. I got like a few different items that I would get. Normally I wouldn't get all of this in the same setting. I would do one or the other. I may get tacos or I might get uh, carnitas, sopes, or the burrilla tacos. There's quite a few people that are doing burrilla tacos in town well. I would say Salsa Limon is right up there with them. They do pretty good burrito tacos, but there's just no hope of those maintaining all the way back to here. Like they're, they're gonna fall apart. So I didn't do that. And here's something y'all need to know. You may or may not know this. When you go to a Mexican restaurant, you need to ask for tomatillo if you like spicy stuff. Tomatillo is a universal term for the salsa that's in the back. They don't serve it at the table unless you ask for it. So you go to any Mexican restaurant, you ask for tomatillo 99% of the time, they're gonna have some. It's different from restaurant to restaurant. And it's one of the things I like about, you know, if I go to a Mexican restaurant is, whose tomatillo do we like now? All that tomatillo is, tomatillo is a small little like green tomato. It grows basically in a shell, I would say. And that's the base for these sauces. So we make a lot of tomatillo at the house. There's infinite different ways you can make it, but it's basically the tomatillos, the variation or the combination of peppers of your choice, onions, garlic, all charred, whether they're broiled or done in the cast iron skillets, how we do it usually. And then um, cilantro, lime, salt, pepper, whatever, then you blend it all up. And like I said, there's infinite ways you can make tomatillo pretty much. And I have really grown to like salsa y limones a lot. We usually just call them salsa limon. We just leave the E out. Maybe we're lazy. So yeah, anyways, this is their tomatillo and I'm a big fan. Sope is a handmade corn tortilla. It's a thick tortilla, as you can see there. And then it's got lettuce, sour cream, cheese, and then the meat of your choice. These are $4.25 and today I got chorizo, which is my favorite one. The chorizo with salsa limon is excellent. Oh yeah, and beans. I forgot to mention there's beans on here too. Yeah, you can't go wrong with this. But the reality is Charlie and Israel just do a really good job over there. Like when you talk about recipes, execution, consistency, Salsa y Limon is one of the most consistent places that we go to. I mean, they just really maintain their consistency. You get the same product pretty much every time. Then on top of that, it's a good product. The other element that we haven't really talked about that is equally important. So I guess there's really four elements to a good restaurant is atmosphere. And when I say atmosphere, I don't just mean the cleanliness of the restaurant the decor, all of that. 
I also mean the friendliness of the staff, patience of the staff, you know, just the whole environment from that standpoint is really, really important. And when we started going there, that was one of the other things that stood out. It's like, wow, the food's good. It was very consistent. So we kept going back and, it, you know, it was consistent each time. We tried different items and they were good too. And so, I mean, to me at least, and I think to a lot of y'all, that element of a dining experience is really, really important too. As a matter of fact, I went to a place the other day. I'm not going to say what it was. I'm historically not really overwhelmed or impressed with their food. Not that it's bad. It just doesn't wow me. I said to my wife, though, because the ownership is so outgoing and so friendly and so patient because working in the restaurant industry requires patience and just that whole atmosphere that they put forth starting with them that will bring me back i'll set my expectations i know what i'm getting but i'll continue to look for items that i do like that'll bring me back in the door on the flip side you can run people off i mean granted good food and execution can carry you it makes me think about the um they called him the soup nazi on seinfeld and they were terrified of that dude but they would go back because the soup was so good so Good food and execution can carry you. But I would say that a great attitude and customer service can actually overcome at least some of your menu issues if you have them. Now, don't get me wrong. Salsa Limon does not have that problem. So it just benefited them even more for us that we did enjoy the atmosphere and environment on top of the food. So that's, like I said, they're in our top three. All right. And lastly, probably my most ordered item, probably our most ordered item as a household, carnitas. Now, I got mine with the white rice. I usually do that. I just like it a little bit better. Usually the white rice has like corn and stuff in it. I don't see the in there today, but it's all good. I like the white rice. Prefer that. Um, and a lot of times I'll get mine with corn tortillas. I just didn't ask for them today. And I'll take this stuff over here and put it on the tortilla. Sometimes. A lot of times, usually too, I'll ask for a fresh jalapeno instead of the pickled one, but... I wasn't really sweating it today too much. Now, if you don't know, carnitas basically is Mexican pulled pork is what it is. It's a slow cooked pork dish. One of the special ingredients in carnitas is Coca-Cola. Bottom line is, in my opinion, and this is definitely the opinion in our house, period, they got the best carnitas in town at Salsa y Limon. Which is probably why I order it so much. There's times where I'll go up there with intentions on getting something different, and I'll end up with this. This is like a default menu item, period. Not just there, but at all in town. And those moments where we're trying to figure out what to get to eat, if we're just gonna pick something up for dinner, and we're struggling to figure it out, there's a really good chance this is gonna be the selection. They just nail it every time, man. Every time. A lot of the Mexican restaurants, their menus are pretty consistent across the border. At least was that way for a long time in Florence. What Salsa y Limon did is kind of a hybridized menu. So they have the typical Americanized stuff, like chorpollo is something that I, it's like my go-to. If I'm trying a Mexican restaurant for the first time, that's an item I probably will get. That's a standard. So they've got that. They've got pollo bandito, all that stuff that you see. Um, of course, carne asada, like stuff that you would just normally see on your Mexican restaurant menus. But they mix it up, too. So they've got, like, a cactus salad, which I've never seen anywhere else. I mean, locally, I mean. Of course, they've got the Bria tacos. They've got regular street tacos, as you just saw an example of. They've also got a really good big burrito. So if you think your only two burrito options in town are Chipotle and uh, Moe's, you might want to add theirs to your list. I usually will add the chorizo for $2. But like I said, I typically find myself getting this. I just keep coming back to it. So they're located on South Cashewood right by celebration. And there's a lot of development going on in that area. Hopefully that will continue to be the case. There's a lot of houses being built over on um, that area of West Florence, just in general, and just an influx of people. So hopefully not only will that help to sustain really good businesses like this one, but also will spur the development of new businesses as well. So yeah, I just wanted to do this one today. I know that uh, there's quite a few popular Mexican restaurants in Florence, but as for us in our household, Salsa y Limon on Cashua is at the very top of the list. So shout out to Charlie and Israel for doing a fantastic job. We appreciate y'all. Now, if you're the type that's, you know, in the area and you're married to one place and you've never been to Salsa y Limon, I highly recommend you go over there and try them out. And look, man, that brings me to a point. I'm going to say this real quick and then we'll be done. Some folks out there need to lighten up. You don't make any error because you go to different places, even if they have the same kind of food. 
For one, nine times out of 10, if you have two different restaurants that specialize in the same type of cuisine, say two Mexican restaurants in this case, and you go all the way down the menu and try the items at both restaurants, I guarantee you that the most likely scenario is you're gonna find some item that you prefer at this restaurant over that one and vice versa. And now you have reason to go to both places because you found something that you like. So for one, that benefits you. But for two, that benefits the whole economy of the restaurants in the community. So some of this, oh, I'm loyal to this place over here, so I'm not going anywhere else and I'm going to speak down on other places. Like, are they paying you? If they're not paying you, please stop doing that. If they are paying you, then, you know, I get it. They're paying you. But as far as I know, none of us are getting paid by these restaurant owners to promote their restaurant. So if you like a place, then just say what you like about it. But you don't have to have a loyalty to one restaurant at the expense of the other. And it's that type of stuff, it's those type of attitudes that have hurt our community in this area and maybe even others for that matter. At the end of the day, for the foodies, the mentality is people should be acknowledged for doing a good job. You're putting out good food and we like to eat it and we appreciate it. And there's enough room in this town for multiple restaurants to have the same type of cuisine and they all equally do a good job and are places that we would like to go eat. Of course, you may have your favorites. Salsa y Limon is at the top of my list, but there are other places that I go eat at. We've been to Don Jose many times. Uh, a group that I eat lunch with pretty frequently, they love to go there, so we go there. Well, if I'm downtown, I'm not opposed to stopping into El Agave, so it doesn't have to be all this competition, guys, okay? You can have your favorite, but it shouldn't have to come at the expense of other restaurants. Really, what we should want as citizens is for all of these restaurants to be thriving because that continues to develop the food culture in our community, which makes an inviting habitation for more restaurants to come into the fold. And that provides us with even more food options where people that are passionate about serving food are coming into the community and doing just that. So everybody just relax, eat your food and enjoy it. All right, that's my public service announcement. With that being said, I've eaten my food. I've enjoyed it as I always do at Salsa y Limon. And I know many of y'all do too. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel for future content. If you're watching these videos and you're not subscribed, gentlemen's agreement, please click that little button. It helps us out a ton. And we will, on our end, continue to work to put out content for you and try to continue to improve along the way as we do it. With that being said, we got some really cool stuff in store. We got some plans lined up for some things that we'd like to do that I'm really excited about that I think y'all are really gonna enjoy. But in the meantime, we appreciate y'all tuning in. We look forward to seeing y'all on the next video. And don't forget that we are giving away $1,000 in gift cards to 10 different restaurants once the YouTube channel hits 5,000 subscribers. So once we get 5,000 subscribers, we're gonna randomly select one person from the Florence Foodies Facebook group to receive 10 gift cards to 10 different restaurants of $100 value. So that's $1,000 in gift cards once the YouTube channel hits 5,000 subscribers. So make sure that you're in that Facebook group if you're local and that you are subscribing and sharing the channel. And we'll see y'all soon.